Fan identity can be performed in so many different ways and fandom can mean different things to different people. From Beatlemania back in the day to football clubs to Star Trek conventions to now at the point you can be a fan of absolutely anything including a brand. My definition of a fan is someone whose willingness to engage with a brand transcends necessity or even reason. My definition of a fan would be somebody who finds inspiration from something, be it music or a brand or a team. Finds inspiration so much that they would alter their lifestyle to support that and to follow that. A fan is somebody who has a, a deep emotional relationship with something or somebody. It's being obsessive but also being discerning. A fan is someone who actively champions an idea, a culture, whatever it is. Um, in terms of brands, that's someone who is essentially a brand ambassador. Hi, I'm Ollie. I'm a fan of PlayStation. I'm Seamus, and uh, I'd say I'm a fan of Marmite. I'm Emily. I live in North London, and I work as a freelance writer and editor. I also look after my own blog, which is a kind of mixture of style and sport. My earliest memories of Nike are probably just being uh, at school in PE lessons, um, kids wearing Nike trainers. I could be described as a sort of a brand ambassador, if you like. It's all snowy. It's all Christmassy. Oh, and what is that? A fire and a massive, what is this? A massive woolly mammoth and a giant. I was at school and um, my classmate brought his PlayStation 1 in. It was amazing. It was uh, the best thing I'd seen by a mile. I was obsessed since then. You know, you can have Marmite for breakfast and you can have that on toast and what have you. But it's one of those things which you can use it for every meal of the day. So um, if you're making gravy, you know, you can just put a bit of Marmite into the gravy and that makes it a bit nicer. Chili con carne, peanut butter, garlic bread. Uh, but into the gut, when you make the garlic butter, you put Marmite into the garlic butter. And it's fabulous. The difference between a fan and a consumer, I think it's kind of the difference between a sort of one night stand and a meaningful relationship. Like, if you go out and you buy a product from a brand, you know, you've got no guarantee they're going to call you a week later and buy your, your product again. But if they're a fan, then, you know, and you properly engage them, then you know they're going to get a call from them a week later. And that's the difference between, you know, proper fandom and just being a consumer. Fans are very keen on differentiating their activities and their identities often from what they see as the undiscriminating consumer, the kind of casual um, viewer or purchaser. In actual fact, however, fans are always already consumers. I think the difference is that they put more in, um, they give more back to the brand, but equally they expect more back in return. I'd been writing my blog for about six months and Nike approached me. They talked to me to see whether I would be interested in running the San Francisco Marathon and me blogging about my training experience and obviously about the running experience and taking my journey from being basically someone who's a bit of a novice runner to being able to run a marathon. So I was born in St. Louis, Missouri and we moved back to the UK when I was only about one or two years old and uh, guess where we moved to? Just down the road from Burton-on-Trent which is where they make Marmite. But it wasn't until I moved to the USA in about 2000 when I really appreciated that Marmite was something I actually really more than just liked. And that's when I created the, the website. Everything's changed since the digital age. I mean, now, first thing you do is get a website. Um, but more recently, Twitter and stuff like that, it makes you um, a lot more accessible. Now with uh, communication channels open, open to them, they now have an enormous influence on, on brand successes and brands cut through. Perhaps in the past it would just be two you know, schoolmates talking about the shows that they would, you know, they're going to watch that night. Now that influence spreads much wider. You can be a million online together talking about something and you can just create a movement if you like. The ways in which fans can interact both with, with brands, text and each other um, has been both accelerated and facilitated and I think crucially and fandom has become now something that can be experienced sort of 24-7. With the digital age you can just show people your stuff. And so I think the big change is definitely about visibility. So a product that's been around for a while but I haven't had a chance to do a bit of commentary on it. The product we're talking about of course is Marmite cashew nuts. The problem with them is that when you open them 
You can't just have one. <laughs> just so good. Brands are so much more transparent than they used to be. You know, I think previously it was the sense that people could see a metaphor of a brand. So it's like Pepsi is the choice of a generation, Nike's the brand that helps you just do it. But now, because of social real time media, everything else, people can sort of see through these metaphors into the actual companies behind the brands, which means that people can get a lot closer to the brands. And if you're a fan, that's great because you can contribute to the brand, you can find out what makes it tick. So I think the way that social media has united disparate groups of people from different countries all around the world is really sort of supercharging fandom, especially around brands. Certainly, if you're looking at fan culture, I think for a brand like, like Fred Perry, looking at social media and, and engagement with those fans it's uh, a medium that's made for a fan brand and as long as you can manage that that well and you give the fans and deliver the fans interesting information then I think social media for us is becoming more and more important now in our communication structure. So we flew into San Francisco and we had, I think, one, one day and one night um, where we kind of taken around and shown the city. And then we went down to the expo the day before, pick up your race number, you know, you can check out the course and, um, yeah, kind of go home to cheat yourself, basically. <laughs> this book we got given before the marathon and kind of slipped inside was a little note from Paula Radcliffe just wishing us good luck. Really cool thing to get um, when you're feeling pretty nervous just before the marathon. And kind of midway round the marathon, about sort of mile 19 basically. It's just that the pressure on your knees is immense. I really started to kind of hit the, the pain barrier. You know, couldn't walk downstairs for a few days afterwards. And then I think it wasn't until three months later, um, I thought I got away with it and um, taking the nail varnish off my toes and uh, looked down, realized I had some sort of black toenails, could lift them off. But they've grown back, so um, no lasting damage, fingers crossed. I wasn't really binging until I got FIFA, um, a footballing game that just got me hooked. And I was playing that, sort of doing all nighters. When I was at school, on school holidays, I could do a few days at a time, I once in a week at a time. When a new game comes out, um, I could get so into it that I could, I mean, on top of my job, I could do maybe six hours a day. And weekends, I could do an all nighter. Yeah, it's, but it kind of has, hasn't changed much fandom for PlayStation, and I think this works for most brands, like most fans set the agenda because they live and breathe and are so immersed in that world. It kind of consumes their, um, their downtime, their high time, their, their, their communication with, with, with their peer groups. Um, and I think very much fandom um, fans, particularly for us, can become some of your biggest Influencers. Fans can definitely be um, influencers um, in terms of um, latest trends, but also brands. It was Christmas 2001, 2002, and I got a phone call from Radio 4 um, asking if I'd do an interview about Marmite, and I, and I thought this was crazy. Uh, my partner is, is pregnant at the moment, and she craves Marmite on practically everything <laughs> at the moment. And so I think we've got three, three jars of Marmite in the, in the cupboards right now. Seamus Waldron uh, from ilovemarmite.com. Thanks so much for coming on the show. My pleasure. That was the beginning of a year where I reckon I did more PR about Marmite than Marmite did. What do you think? I think that's the result, isn't it? Marmite chocolate, very, very nice. Definitely really good. Mm. 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 I was interviewed um, for the Australian Broadcasting Corporation, the International Herald and Tribune, um, the New York Times, all these American-based media outlets um, I was quoted in or they'd found my website and they referenced it. And then um, throughout the, the world, people were talking about Marmites. And numerically, fans may still be a small percentage of who you're trying to reach, and that fan voice could reach out alongside your marketing and, and your communication strategy. They're going to be the people that go to the pub and tell their mates how amazing your album is. And they're going to um, 
you know, share your video. They're gonna, they're gonna share your content. They're gonna go out and be the mouthpiece for, for you know, the message that your artist wants to put across or the music that you want to put across. And we all know that's, that's more valuable than just, you know, a banner ad. You know, it's very important that someone's out there talking about you and, um, you know, 90% of the stuff that I look at or that I maybe want to buy are the things that my friends have told me that they like. I'm someone that, that kind of likes Nike and probably takes lots of the positive messages that it's trying to send out and I certainly share those with people around me whether they're sports fans or not just because I think that the stuff's cool you know from anything like the the Liberty Print Dunks to um, some of the projects that they're doing just down to the sportswear as well. Not every fan is a creative type, but for others they do want to be designing the logo for next for the for the year. And we've done that in the past with Big Brother and Skins, where we let people come up with sort of logos. The passion that fans have for the show and sort of the ability to harness their creativity is, you know, it's, you know, if you're a fan of Skins, you will want to go out and create stuff if we give you the, the, the help to do that. Whether you're engaged in the wider fan community, or you know, even if you're not potentially, um, fandom always enables a form of creativity. Whether it be bands where you've got things like Rage Against the Machine getting to number one because someone believed in the record and wanted to make something happen. You've got fans writing episodes of Doctor Who, but then on the flip side, you've got brands like Walkers who are actually turning over their product range to their fans and allowing them to sell them um, and make money from them. Any brand that is lucky enough to have fans would be idiotic not to sort of stimulate and engage those fans. What you have to do is essentially reward them with additional value or interactivity. You need to talk to them as well. I mean, I know it's a cliche, we talk about moving from a, a, a monologue to a dialogue, but you've got to have a conversation with them. You've got to see what makes them tick. What would they like from the brand? What can you do for them? And I think making them feel more rewarded just kind of gets that lovely sort of circle where, you know, the more rewarded they are, the more they contribute to the brand and it just keeps going. It's been a kind of really good relationship um, they always let me know about new stuff that's coming out, um, anything new that I'd like to, to try or get involved in. Um, and likewise, they, you know, they ask my opinion on, um, sometimes if they're coming up with kind of new sports kit, things like that, they, they might ask. They wanted to create a new dance kind of high top. They went out and wanted to kind of consult a few people, and I used to be a dancer, so they came to speak to me to find out you know, what was already on the market, but what, are, and then also what are dancers actually wearing. I always want to try out new stuff and, and see how it's working for me. And then if it's something that I feel like other people like me would be A, interested in, or B, um, would benefit from hearing about, then I'll write about it. Brands that are cultural icons take the emotion but build on it. And if you look at brands like Converse that's been around for 103 years, or Fred Perry that just had a reunion gig with the specials, they're, they're brands that are embedded in that culture. For a brand like Fred Perry, it's, it's not necessarily a fashion decision. They make decisions based on experiences uh, they've had with the brand. Uh, they make emotional uh, decisions about purchase. Every decision is an, emotion, is an emotional decision, but the one consistent that, that has I guess delivered that emotion or imparted that emotion has been the brand's association with music. Of course fans are amazingly powerful but a lot of people go out there seeing it from the benefit of the brand when it should always be seen through the eyes of the, the fan itself. So if you've got a marketing person who wants to engage with fandom, if they are not a fan themselves, and haven't kind of experienced that and don't have a sort of reflexive awareness of that, that's going to, that's going to be a much more difficult process. So in a sense, what, what you would really want to do is bring fans into the um, process of the design of the strategy. A good example would maybe to look at the music industry where Kevin, one of the biggest fans of Soul Wax, has worked his way up for being community manager and publicist for all uh, Soul Waxes and Too Many DJs affairs. People would ask Dave and me like, what happens with this remix and when is it coming out on vinyl? And we'd be like, I don't know man, ask Kevin. So it seemed to be like a logical solution. I was like, why don't we take Kevin on tour with us? 
My job title is a PlayStation super user. I found out about the job from my friend. They were looking for a position for a gamer to um, try out the new PlayStation product. I instantly jumped at the chance. You know, I'm, a, I'm a PlayStation super fan who um, tests, you know, tests out the new consoles and I can give that feedback to marketing staff to help launch games and consoles. Calling all bloggers, telly lovers, noisemakers, and rebel rousers. We're putting a team together. Yes, we're handpicking our best fans to be part of the all new E4s. The E4s project, we managed to find a group of people who are not just passionate about the programs we put on, but actually really want to be sort of championing E4 itself. And so the more that we can use that power to sort of spread the word and get people, you know, get them talking about the shows that are forthcoming is actually really good for us. And we've seen that with skins over the years, every single season has always looked back and sort of looked at the things that the fans do and don't like and sort of try to address some of that to try and make the show as great as it can be. I think if you're a brand and you're not listening to the people, the voice of the people who wear your product or support your product or endorse your product, then at some point you're definitely going to have some problems. Marmite do send me stuff. They send me all sorts of stuff. And I find it quite interesting because they will never turn around and say, could you put this on your website? They'll never turn around to me and say, could you review this? And they'll definitely never say, you know, could you put something and say that you like it? I've been really lucky because the people who make Marmite have let me say whatever I think. And I'm not a yes man. And sometimes I do say things that perhaps they would never say in a PR statement. But they go with it, you know, they, they make the most of it because they understand that the voice of the fan is, is really powerful and it should be what it is as opposed to what they want it to be. Artists need to understand now um, how to speak to their, their fans. It's become very complicated um, and media consumption is so fragmented that you have to understand where your potential fans are. I mean, the music industry is where fan culture began, but even they have had to move with the times. And you've got really well-established bands like Radiohead and the Kaiser Chiefs turning over their entire album to their fans in order to do something a bit different. Investing in them, especially with our last record, we did it in a weird way where we let them choose 10 out of the 20 tracks we recorded to make their own personal album and do their own artwork. We recorded a bucket load of songs, I mean, 25 in total, but we put 20 up on a day. No one knew it was happening. And then you could choose your 10, make your artwork, buy it, you could sell it on and make money yourself. Had a sort of a big taxi with blacked out windows pick me up, take me to the airport, then um, flew over. I had a, had a taxi driver with the sign with my name on. Um, Felt like a bit of a, you know, a VIP <laughs> going over there. I arrived at the um, events, GameX in Stockholm, and I went on stage, um, a f you know, a few hours later. I just finished presenting the Vita on stage to 200 people, and I didn't die. There are lots of great brands out there who are getting it right, who are going out, finding their fans, rewarding them and engaging them, and they're reaping the rewards. Recently in the summer I was asked if I'd go on a, a daytime uh, television programme to see if I could beat the world record for the amount of Marmite eaten in a minute. And what you're meant to do is you're meant to get your Marmite jar and uh, basically eat as much as you can. And so we had a barbecue and I thought, OK, I'll try it. I'll just do one big spoonful of it. And I took one big spoonful, it went down fine. The problem was I felt rather ill. The researcher wasn't overly happy when I, I just out and out said I wasn't going to do it after that. But, um, you know, sometimes I wish I'd done it because, you know, being in the Guinness Book of World Records could be quite cool. But um, maybe, maybe you can only take, <laughs> you can only take your fandom so far. And that was one step too far. Because fans are creative and they really would want a space for their agency, um, you can't approach fandom as a sort of one-shot deal where you know, one marketing campaign and, you, and you know, you're kind of working with the fandom. Proper fandom is about a long-term play for brands. It's about cherishing them, it's about giving them all the stuff they want, added value, interactivity, like I've said, and having a proper dialogue with them. And I think that if they do that and they invest in the, in, in the fans and the fans will in turn invest back in them, it's a cliche, but you know, a fan is for life. So if I'm really a fan of something, I'm going to want that fan object 
to have a certain continuity. So if a brand is reformulated or there's a new product range, that could actually um, agitate uh, fandom. If you slip up, as an artist or you do something that maybe they don't like or maybe they're against, they definitely will tell you about it now. You have to be open to, to reacting to that and, and having that dialogue and you see brands messing that up quite a bit. Whoever thought up a Marmite breakfast bar should really have not woken up that morning. Absolutely disgusting. I mean, I was the one who was clawing it out of my mouth. It was horrible. So um, you'll never hear me say a good word about Marmite breakfast bars, so, you know, if I don't like it, trust me, I will tell you. <laughs>
improve their brand image. I think it's really important for companies to give back, you know, and to work closely with the people and the influencers basically where their product. If anything, just to kind of show them in a different light. For myself personally, a lot of young people I work with, you know, their only experience of Nike is basically going into Nike Town. It kind of opens their minds up to kind of different possibilities and collaborations. Passion um, and a sense of aliveness, a sense of vitality. Um, that you feel you know, when you're a fan of something. It's a particular type of um, experience or people feel more alive, they feel in touch with themselves uh, when they're engaging with the object of their fandom. When we had the last British election, let's just say we did some guerrilla dancing. I had half of my dancers from, from Buckinghamshire wearing I Love Marmite t-shirts and uh, our dancers in London, they, they were wearing the I Hate Marmite and we went down to the London Eye and um, shot a video. Fans are very important because they're going to be there, hopefully, if you look after them, they're going to be there for the next album, for the next album, for that tour. I think fans are vital to a brand and um, I think even more so now. Fans are incredibly important for, for the brand. Obviously their, their, their loyalty from a consumer perspective is like gold. They are fundamental to the success of the brand. It's all about the fans. That's all it's about. Without them you wouldn't exist. I think the fan is king. Definitely a fan of like Nike trainers. It does go back to like when I'm a kid. Do you know what I mean? And um, I was really into basketball. I'm a fan of Chelsea Football Club, early nights and audio books, and I'm a fan of shoes. I'm quite excited by Star Wars Lego. That really excites me. I'm a fan of Guinness. I'm a fan of gym. I'm a really big fan of food. Massive fan of Radiohead. That's one of the reasons I'm, I'm, I'm here now. But I do own a Lionel Richie fan club T-shirt. Does that count? And I'm a fan of The Wire. I've watched that so many times. I've even won a, a quiz. I'm a fan of Oaxaca, Wagamama, Addison Lee, Denim, Patagonia, Oliver Spencer, too many.